Input into UI elements within Unreal Engine can be a little tricky to deal with because Unreal having its own default implementation for things like navigation and confirming things on buttons, for instance, oftentimes can assume that you're just going to go with those button mappings. But maybe you want to do something entirely different. Maybe you want to use the top face button on your gamepad as the confirm button on your buttons. I don't see why you would, but the freedom and creativity to do that should be there. And it requires a little bit of setup, but today we're going to go over a way to set up something where you can use the enhanced input system together with your UI elements. So let's actually set all that up. First and foremost, we're going to make a user interface elements here, just a widget blueprint. Uh, user widget and we'll make this uh, for now we're going to do this as a custom button which is effectively just going to be a button that has custom input so i'll call that wbp custom button of course you can call this whatever you want and when we open that up all that we're going to put in here really is going to be a button you can, of course, build this out a little bit more. Uh, in my own project, I have such a custom button, uh, which I can show you right here somewhere. And in this, I have a overlay within that, a image and a named slot instead. The reason that you don't see a button here is because it actually inherits of the custom fixed button, which is a C++ class that implements some stuff and adds in the button for me. That's not relevant for what we're doing right here today, but. You can see that you can add more than just a button to this. For the tutorial, we're going to just stick with only this button. A couple of things that aren't important for the setup uh, for input, but what I do like to do is going into the event graph here and go on add it to focus path. And then we just get the reference to our button and we set the background color for that uh, to whatever color we want this when we have this focus. So we promote that to a variable, I call that focus color. You can expose that if you want to. Uh, let's give that a default value of like a nice purplish dark blue. And that's what we set this to when we add it to the focus path. And we just copy that over. Uh, we give it a new variable for the default color. So we just give default color in real quick. Again, you can expose that to make that instance editable for a per button basis. And we're going to set that to a more light blue pleasant color. So that's not quite gray, but say very solo core and then we also do the same thing here in event preconstruct you can build this out however you want you can make a dynamic material for this with a bunch of parameters in which case it might be good to split this out into its own function like set default style set focus style all that kind of stuff for now this is the way that we're going to do it just so that we have something a little bit more visual going on as you can see we have this light blue now so then we can add a new user interface alongside that. And that's going to be the thing that we actually add to the screen. So for now, I'm going to call this just the HUD. It's not actually going to be HUD. It's more like a menu, but it doesn't really matter what we call this, obviously. Uh, and then we add a canvas panel to this. And we're going to be adding, I don't know, I'm just going to add like a vertical box with a couple of these buttons inside of it. Uh, so let's add a vertical box, say that we anchor that to the center of the screen. So position to zero and zero, uh, the alignment to 0.5 and 0.5. And then we set this size to, I don't know, whatever we want really. And then we add a couple of these custom buttons into this vertical box. So let's add three of them, set all of them to fill and have a little bit of padding to each side. And now we have a box with three of our custom buttons. When we add this to the screen, what I'm going to do is on construct, I'm going to get the player controller and we're going to set input mode to UI only, not game only. And then the widget to focus, you can set what widget is going to get your keyboard focus when you set your game mode uh, or your input mode to UI only. So I'll just get one of these buttons and give that the focus. So let's go over to our third person blueprint real quick. I'm just going to add in a quick debug key uh, for let's do you because it's UI. And that's going to create a widget. It's going to be our HUD widget. And we'll just immediately add that to the viewport, at which point its construct event will run, obviously. So now, if we run the game and I press U, you'll see that one of our buttons. When I click on any of these buttons, they get the keyboard focus applied to them. And then I can use my arrow keys to cycle between them. That's just the custom button styling that we just did. 
and you got to make sure that this is something that I usually end up forgetting. Uh, the button itself, the custom button, not the button inside of it, but the topmost widget here. If you go into that and you set this to being is focusable, that is quite important. You can even set it to specifically focus on the button inside of it, if you really want to. Annoying bit is the buttons that we already added might not immediately reflect that update. As you can see, these are not set to being uh, is focusable. It doesn't uh, quite inherit that properly. But if we update that and then do this, you can see now immediately it has the proper stuff going for it. At which point, actually, just normal widget in focus does work. Uh, so you don't need a keyboard focus thing. What if we want to run some code on this custom button when we press something that is not the usual confirm button, which would be the X button, right? Let's go into our custom button class, and there we have the unclicked event of our button, right? So we have on uh, clicked, on pressed, on released, on hovered, on unhovered. On clicked, uh, if we just do a print string on that, there's actually a couple of things that will by default trigger this on clicked. Obviously, when we click on it, but also when we press the spacebar key when it is focused, it will click the button. The down face button on your controller also will by default trigger this. So if that is the behavior that you want, Unreal just kind of implements all that by default for you. And for the most part, that is the way that you would imagine your inputs to work. But maybe also Enter actually uh, triggers it as well. So, but what if you want different buttons to do stuff? What if you want the Z key, for instance, to trigger this? Or what if you want the top face button or the left trigger button or whatever to trigger these buttons. Moreover, what if you want these to be remappable? Well, that's where enhanced input comes in. So we already have some enhanced input, I believe, set up as a part of the third person uh, template here. So I think that'll be in the controller somewhere. You can see we have the enhanced input local player subsystem, which gives us a mapping context. I'm actually going to make a new mapping context with some new mapping actions that we will go through from the ground up. So that will be an input mapping context, and we'll call this UI actions. And I'm just going to make one mapping here, uh, which is going to have a accompanying action, of course. So uh, again, where is input? I'm very bad at this. Input action. Uh, I always like to call those input action M or input action menu, but it's entirely up to you how you want to maybe prefix this or not. And we'll just call that confirm and we'll give that a input mapping here. So we're going to do something weird. I'm going to do this with the Z key on the keyboard and the top face button on my gamepad. Hey, if you're enjoying this content and it's helping you out, please don't forget to leave a like on this video. You can also leave a comment on this video expressing what you liked or asking questions that I can cover in future videos. And then, of course, if you want to stay up to date with those new uploads, make sure that you're subscribed to the channel as well. Of course, since we are now using the enhanced input system, uh, this supports remappable keys to begin with. I have not tested that out myself yet, but in theory, there's nothing to stop you from setting this up with remappable keys and then having everything automatically worked with those remapped keys. Now, in our controller, what I'm going to do is I'm just going to add this mapping context uh, like this. You might want to only add and then remove this mapping context when you actually have the UI menus open or whatever. It's entirely up to the implementation for your specific game. I'm just going to add in uh, the UI actions here with priority zero. It doesn't really matter. But what you'll note now is we have these input actions uh, mapped. If we go into the custom button, and uh, you can actually just drag this event in. You might think, okay, so we can just say on started, we print uh, a string for testing purposes, and we say this will be like inputs, and we'll make that red for reasons. This is still not going to work, because this only fires when you are in input mode game or game and UI, but we set our input mode to UI only. So if we go ahead and start up our UI and we press the buttons that we assign to it, nothing happens. But if we go back into the HUD and instead of setting this to UI, we set this input mode UI and game, you will then note that it does 
actually work. But that has some potential problems of its own, uh, which might not be desirable. But you will note that now it does work. It does, however, do it on every single button. Because it has no concept of whether or not it should only do this when it's focused. It's just every button sees, hey, I have an input event. Input event fires, so I'm going to do my thing. So if you're going to go this route, which again, might not be desirable to begin with, it is important to check has keyboard focus. Or alternatively, uh, has any user focus or has specific user focus. So the difference is for multiplayer games, this will return true if any user is focused on this element. This will specifically check for one player controller, whether or not it has focus on this. For single player games, this ends up being uh, the same thing. This is whether or not it has keyboard focus, which is the thing that we're working with anyway. So very easily, we can just say, hey, only if you have keyboard focus do you do like, your thing. And now you will note that it only prints one of them because it's only printing it out for any time we have keyboard focus. That is the most straightforward way of doing things. Uh, not ideal because it relies on the input mode and all that kind of stuff uh, being not just UI only. And we usually want to set input to UI only when we're working with menu and UI stuff. So how do we still use these input mappings in a way that we can use in input mode UI only? Well, there we go into overriding a existing function, that being on key down. We check the in key event, and from that we can get the key that was just pressed. And here what we need to do is we need to check, hey, this key that was just pressed, does that key correspond with any of the keys that are mapped to a specific input action at this point? And we can do that with getting our local input uh, subsystem. And then we can query the keys mapped to any given action. So we give in our confirm action, which I need to not misspell. And that gives us an array of keys that are mapped to this action. So if we for each loop over that, all that we now need to do is we need to check, hey, is any of this equal to the key that we just input? Because then we just input a key corresponding to that action. And if that is true, we can run a event or a function that actually confirms our stuff. So in this case, we'll do custom event on something like press button, at which point we can add in any stuff uh, that we'd like. Obviously, what you probably do is you have an event dispatcher here on custom click, and you just call that out so that we can bind to that in our actual widgets where we use this button. Then when we just, the normal unclicked event is effectively just going to also run press button so that the behavior between those two things is consistent and the same. So back in on key down, if that's true, we uh, press button. And then it's important to say, hey, this return value here for whether or not this input event is now handled, we do need to actually uh, give that a value. So we just say that that is handled so that the engine knows, okay, this input has done its thing. We don't need to look for further inputs. If, however, we reach the end of this for each loop, uh, we do want to return a unhandled. Again, telling the engine that, hey, we checked whatever this widget is doing, it doesn't really matter. <laughs> uh, we didn't find anything. You need to continue searching for other inputs uh, to handle. So now you'll notice if I open this up and I press the Z key, even though I'm in UI only mode, it actually is printing inputs and it will also be broadcasting that event dispatcher. And the same thing with my controller here. If I press the top face button, it actually runs inputs. The fun thing is because we're using key down on the actual UI element individually, it'll only run when we actually have focus on that UI element to begin with. So where we printed three times input before because it was just responding to an event no matter what, this function actually only runs when you have focus on a given element. So we can actually prove that by going in here. I added the print string, I think, off screen, but it shouldn't be that important. Uh, we can get the display name uh, for this object with get display name and print that out instead, and we'll just get uh, this object. So they actually can see which of the buttons is uh, printing out of that message. So you can see right now with this custom button, if I go one down, it will be custom button one and custom button two. So that is how we can set up inputs on our UI elements through the enhanced input system 
with any button mappings that we like. It is a little bit roundabout, it's a little bit weird, but it'll work, and in theory it should also work with remapped keys. Now, the major downside uh, to this compared to using the events is that you don't actually get sent through the value of your input. So if you are using things like a two-dimensional axis, for, for instance, your analog stick, you're not going to be able to get that value sent through in the same way. This code is simply just checking if a button was pressed or not, uh, not anything like a axis value or whatever. So there still is a little bit of a limitation to what this can do. But for simple input checking, this is definitely a fantastic way to actually broaden the amount of inputs that you can do on any given UI element. And a very big thank you to all my Patreons. You can see them on screen right now. If you want to help support the channel or get any of the project files in any of my tutorials, there's a link down below to the Patreon page to support me or alternatively as a YouTube member. My cave students, dear supporters, Oiku, Earl, Monserville, Erno, and my cave digger, dear supporters, Mauricio Ferrias.